Brendan Coyle is an RE teacher and assistant head at St Joseph's Roman Catholic High School in Rochdale. He's ever ready, ever reliable, and with the demands of both the teaching and leadership role, ever so stressed. I contacted Teachers TV because the role that I'm in at present as assistant head teacher, I'm conscious that the staff that I work with and the pupils that I teach need to get something from me. And at the moment, I'm not convinced yet that I use my time as effectively as I could. Brendan, could you possibly do me a favour? Have you just rung me? Yeah. Do you want the November assessment putting on? Could you put it in your diary, please? And I'm coming with you? Yeah, please. Staff sometimes want instant answers or they want things done straight away. Uh, and those issues actually can make your life or your day quite stressful. Don't worry. Don't worry. John, let's get you for From my meeting with Gladina, I'd like to believe that she would provide for me some strategies that I can use to help me become a better leader and a better manager. And that would impact on my effectiveness in school. But also the spin-off would be perhaps I won't have to work any harder but be more effective, which would give me more time for my leisure pursuits at home and perhaps to see a little bit more of my wife. And I'm certain she'd like that a bit more. I'm quite excited to meet Gladina actually. I know about some of her work before, so I'm quite confident that she'll be able to lead me and help me to use my time and give me some to use my time better and give me some some tips to be a better leader. Cue Gladina. Oh, hi, it's Gladina Martha Brendan Coyle. Hello! Hi, Brendan. Hi, Gladina. Nice to meet you. Hi, Gladina. Lovely to meet you. Thanks very much for coming. Oh, it's my pleasure. Come on, and sit down. So, Brendan, what are the challenges that you want me to help you with? I would like, if you don't mind, to try and help me... help me manage my time. Mm -hmm. So that I am very effective in school and also have got time to give uh, at home for my own leisure pursuits and also to give time to my family. I don't think yet yeah, I'm skilled enough to work out for myself that this has to be done, this I can put to the side and perhaps leave for another day. How do you pace that? How do you make decisions for yourself about how much can be done, is reasonable to be done and in what time? I don't do that. Okay. <laughs> I tend to just add it on to the time so my days become longer and longer. So how much work do you take home with you? I don't leave often school before five o'clock. Okay. And then it might be another, when I've had tea, I might do another hour or so. More and more now I'm tending to have a very quick power nap and then, mm -hmm. and then see if I can get back to, to doing something for school again. Do you sleep well or...? Uh, I, I'm not the best sleeper in the world, but I don't think I ever have been. Okay. I'll be very quick to go off to sleep and have three, four hours and then wake. Mm -hmm. Now, if I was on holiday, generally that my sleeping pattern actually is better. If your sleeping pattern is better in the holidays, then it does kind of suggest that the pressure that you're putting yourself under is disrupting your sleep. Mm -hmm. Because if you were naturally one of those people that has ongoing sleep issues, it wouldn't actually improve in the holidays. Right. The fact that it does tells me that it's a reaction that you've got mm -hmm. to the pressure. But again, I don't think I'm any different to many people. No, you're not, but I've got you here, not them. <laughs> <laughs> you discount yourself. You use phrases like, well, this is what everybody else does. You know, this, I'm no different to all the other teachers, etc. 
But actually, if, it's go, if, if we're going to effect change for you, mm -hmm. you're going to have to say, I'm important enough to make this happen. So what we want is a more realistic thinking style. But you've given me a lot to think about now, Brendan. So I'm going to ponder. Very good. And I'll come back later and we'll have another chat. And um, look forward to it. <laughs> First of all, it's brilliant that you're all here now. But we've got to be prepared. Next Friday, you're going to have somebody looking at how you work. So you need to bat it off the first, I think. What about they have to put it on the oven now? No, don't put it in the oven. Get a frying pan for lunch. Right now then. Turn it. That's it. Brendan, what are you doing in this class? What's... Well, this is a Year 11 catering GCSE group. OK. And I have been asked to take this group on... Just one thing. I thought your specialism was RE. It is. I know that uh, the timetable was aware that I do some cooking at home and I enjoy cooking. So, uh, as, as would I take it on. And me being me... Said yes. Said yes. So three times a week you get lunch, mm -hmm. OK? Technically. <laughs> Technically? But you well, could. There's always things. Yes, I could, actually. You yeah. could. Yeah. But twice yeah. a week you have it on the run like now. Like this. Yeah. OK. Well, Brendan, it's been a very interesting day and I've had an opportunity to think about some things that I think might be of some use to you. Very good. I look forward to hearing them. Ah, oh, you may not uh, by the time I finish, though, because remember what I said earlier to you about the fact that I have a feeling that uh, these might be some challenges for you. Mm -hmm. Well, the first one is the art of delegation. Yes, I know the word. Not that good at it. <laughs> So one of the things that I think would be very helpful for you is to actually identify, A, who are the people you can delegate to, mm -hmm. and B, what are the things you can delegate. Right. And then to go into school and maybe talk to those individuals about the type of tasks that you're going to delegate to them mm -hmm. so that they will be aware what would be coming their way. So you don't do it, you don't do it without informing them, you don't do it on the sly, as it were, it's you're actually telling them that you're going to delegate. Absolutely, because in a management role like yours, um, there's two parts to that. One is managers delegate, mm -hmm. that's good management practice. Mm -hmm. But secondly, delegation is also a good way to grow members of staff. The second task is that we talked about realistic thinking, you know, this concept of you being able to stand back and identify mm -hmm. for yourself what you are doing that's actually good. What I want you to do is to get yourself a journal and to start to realistically appraise the things that you do. And the way that I want you to do that is to write down all the things that you actually do do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, when you do that, I want you to then stand back a bit as if you're in the third person mm -hmm. and evaluate that. If this was someone else and you had the list of all these things there, what would you be thinking about that individual? Now, the third exercise that I want you to undertake is to devise a timetable for the whole of your week. <laughs> and I want you to put into that timetable what seems realistic for you. Again, think of it as a third person. If this was someone else, how many times a week do you think it's realistic for them to maybe mm. go to the gym or go running or do whatever it is? And I want you to actually put that down as legitimate activities which you block out in your diary. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like saying that my recreational time almost becomes the same or as important as a meeting time. Correct. If I wouldn't avoid a meeting... You wouldn't avoid your exercise. Can I just check on this idea of your timetable, though? Mm -hmm. I don't shift everything to the weekend, I no. presume. It's got to be something every day. Yes, something reasonable for you to do. Now, I'm not suggesting right. that, for example, every day you go running. I'm not suggesting no. that. But I am suggesting that, you know, three times a week doesn't sound unreasonable. No. And that will also force you into looking at the way you prioritise 
work related issues. So you're talking about splitting things up into short term, medium term and long term goals? Correct. So how does all that sound to you? I think it would be very good for me to sit down and do this paper exercise. Mm -hmm. I'd be interested to see how I value myself. Because I think by the very nature of what I do, I'm quite critical. Well, it's funny you should say that, actually, Brendan, because you've just reminded me. I think there's another exercise for you to do. And that is that I want you to come up with 20 things you think you're really good at. That I'm really good at? Mm -hmm. 20? <laughs> I don't know about 20. Now, if I said to you, give me 40 things that you think you could do better, you'd give me 50, like that. Your focus needs to be about learning to be realistic about yourself. I see, I see the value of doing it. Mm -hmm. I, I think there'll be a challenge, not just the 20 questions, but I think the actual timetable to force myself to sit down and plan that is a, is a challenge. Mm -hmm. But it'll be worth doing. Medina, thanks very much for that. Oh, you're welcome. Listen, it's been a real pleasure, a real pleasure to come over today. And just remember that if you want to get that headship eventually, you've got to start looking after yourself. But can I start tomorrow, please? Yes, you can tomorrow, as long as you really do tomorrow, though. I will. I, I, I look forward to starting my plan tomorrow. Fantastic. See you soon. Yeah, thanks ever so much for coming. Take care. See you now. Bye-bye. Bye. You know, it was really, really interesting meeting Gladina. I had some reservations about the sort of advice that a life coach could give, but I was amazed at uh, the insights that she could pick up ever so quickly. I mean, she's only known me for a few hours, and her accuracy was outstanding, I thought. So as Brendan makes a start on his tasks, Gladina wonders how a former client is getting on. Well, when I met Stuart Riley last year, he was really struggling with his performance. He couldn't get a grip on the class and they were pretty disruptive, really. Well, let's remind ourselves of what it was really like for Stuart. Stuart Riley, former customs officer and now teacher at Dane Court Grammar School in Kent, was finding it difficult to assert his authority in the classroom after coming into teaching late. Now, this is a diagram of an electromagnet. Wanting to be a success, Stuart found himself over-planning for the more difficult classes, meaning that he had less time for the things he enjoyed. So he asked Ease the Load for help. Where do you leave the work? Four fifths. Gladina felt that the root of his problem was in the classroom and wasted little time getting to work. One of the things I noticed in both classes, and it probably has a greater impact when you've got, shall we say, a slightly more rowdy class, yeah. is that you're very focused on the task yeah. and you're very focused on individual students and going round and trying to make sure that they all get something of you. Yeah. However, you don't scan the room with your eyes very much. It is a difficult issue, that. OK, stand up. <laughs> One of the things that I want you to do is to send... Gladina felt that Stuart could assert his authority through scanning the room more, kind of working on his body language and making eye contact. And I'm kind of looking... Yeah. yeah. When you're uncomfortable with eye contact, you look as if you are having it by just watching a point slightly to the side of someone's head. So where my hand is now. So you're looking over yeah. here, but it's not 100% so in my eyes. But I don't know yeah. that. Yeah. So I'm thinking he's looking at me, but you're like, thank God I'm off the hook. A few weeks later, Gladina returned to Dane Court to see how Stuart was getting on. Right, everyone quiet. It's unacceptable to talk when I'm talking. You know that. We've had this discussion on several occasions recently. How do you think it's gone? I have made an effort to, to put your ideas into practice. The scan in the room has been very useful. And since I've been doing that, I have been noticing a, a few sort of minor misdemeanours that which I would, would have probably missed in the past. Well, Stuart, you know, I think if I come back in a year, you're going to be quite a different character. Those kids are not going to know what's hit them. Well, I hope you're right. <laughs> <laughs> well, here I am, a year on in. I said to Stuart I'd be back in a year, and I am. So let's just go and see how he's getting on with that class of his. Straightforward equation to solve then. How do we find x from that? Take 22 away from 29. Excellent. So, hi, Gazina. The cross is almost over, but if you'd like to take a seat at the back. If you take 
If you can follow that solution from that point onwards, in other words, take this equation from this equation, so we end up with the value for x. Yeah. Okay. Okay. First of all, write the equation out. You've got to look at it and see how we can get rid of those variables. So Stuart, when I came last year, okay, you just started teaching yeah. and you've been thrown in at the deep end um, and I think to, it's fair to say that things were a little bit tough for you and I suggested maybe that there were some strategies that might help and I just wondered how have they worked? Well, I think they've worked very well. Um, but when you came before, um, I had some difficulty with... Uh, behaviour and also a lot of the time spending a huge amount of time planning, often very ineffectively. Um, and I think the key point you said was that I'm striving for perfection and unfortunately I am a perfectionist. And this year it's, it is far from perfect and I'm still having a few problems but the number of problems I'm having is much, much less. Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing is I feel a lot more relaxed about it whereas last year I was so tense mm -hmm. and um, I think that had an adverse effect on the children as well. So. Well I think that's a really good point because you know children are very perceptive yeah. and they pick up kind of like atmosphere That's so if we're emanating that sort of thing whether they're conscious of it or not they pick it up one of the things we talked about was the kind of body language scanning yeah. the room etc yeah. so how do you feel that's going i'm better at it in that classroom you've got the plan you've got the um, delivery you've got the behavior you've got people putting their hands up and it's very very hard to get everything mm -hmm. going at one time and i i'm getting there but um, I'm still making mistakes, and I'm, I, I don't think I've made quite as many mistakes as I used to. <laughs> One thing I have learned um, on that line is not to dwell too long with each individual child. If you do too much with one child, then the rest of the class are, uh, gives them an opportunity to um, misbehave. So I've learned that if you, the more effective, if you break things down into, into small steps and you make it quite clear, then you can say, look, there's step one, step two on the board. When you've done step two, I'll come back and I'll help you with the next one, rather than trying to take them through each one. And I think also you're going to have some, um, try and create some of this time for yourself to do some of your own, like, uh, uh, exercise and stuff. Have you been doing that? Yeah, I th well, this time last year I was a bit overwhelmed by the whole experience mm -hmm. and the amount of um, exercise I was doing did drop, drop off, but when it came to these holidays, I was able to start, and I have since then. I've been doing a lot of running and cycling. Wow, fantastic! So getting a bit of sort of that balance. Yeah, in there. It's, it's a lot better than it was. I'm still doing a lot more hours, I think, than the more experienced teachers. However, it is getting quicker, and it's, I'm getting more confident in what I'm doing. It sounds like you've managed to integrate a lot of those strategies. Yeah. You can see how far you've come with them. And you can see that there are still, sort of, if you keep practicing, there are still some. Oh, there's, to go. There, there's still some way to go. I'm still making too many assumptions with the children. Sometimes I, I tend to think, oh, they must know that. And, or I go two steps when I should only go one step. But I guess what you're really saying, Stuart, and I think that is, is, is the attitude really, is you can only do one thing at a time. time. You're 100% better than last year, so next year you'll be 100% better than this year. Well, I hope so. <laughs> Well, Stuart's doing really well. He's certainly got more presents, but I wonder how Brendan's doing. It's been about a week since uh, Gladina has been here talking about uh, my time management, etc. And I'm still very much aware of how I use my time at school for optimum effect. Uh, unfortunately, now through the use of the timetable, I feel as though I'm actually more productive. I've had a very successful day today and I'm, I'm buzzing about it really uh, because I've been doing a bit of delegating and that is something I found very difficult in the past and as Gladina said it's not all always about uh, me having to flog myself it's about empowering other people and it's brilliant that the staff at school were always willing to to give the time uh, where the benefits after the children so I'm grateful for them for that so that's fantastic. I've been talking to staff today about this general premise that if you're into teaching you've got to give and give and give and give of your time and really I think now well, I've come to the conclusion that we've got to change that that you've got to give yourself the permission to say no I'm only going to do this much today so that I can have some time so that I can do things that will really recharge the batteries. Consequence being for me is that I think my sleeping pattern has, has become better. So 
given myself a little bit of time out. I'm not going to bed thinking of school and waking up in the middle of the night thinking, oh, I've got to do this, this and this. I tend to be far more relaxed. And then when I get into school, I'm ready for, for action. Uh, I've had a great day at school today. Really enjoyed what I've done. I've done about an hour's worth of work after tea. And now it's me time, so I'm off for a run. Have a bit of fun. So it's back to Rochdale for Gladina to check on Brendan's progress. Gladina, how are you? Thanks ever so much for coming back. My pleasure. Let's go. Right, you lead the way. Thank you very much. So Brendan, it's real pleasure to see you again. And you, Gladina. It's and great I'm, to see you. I'm curious. I just want, <laughs> how's it all been going? Because when I left, there were a number of tasks for you to undertake. And I think when we talked about it, one of the most challenging for you at the time was this concept of coming up with 20 positive things about yourself. So how did that go? I thought I would really struggle with that, uh -huh. to find 20. But actually, when I sat down that same weekend, I actually, first of all, managed easily 20 and then went on to get 21, 22, 23. Fantastic. Uh, I actually enjoy doing that task because uh -huh. it affirms actually some of the uh, some of the positive things about you as a person. Well, I'm really delighted you said that, Brendan, because it's all about getting the balance back. And you know, it's just all too easy for us to look at the negative and not look at the positive. And what we need to do is to make sure that they stay in balance. So, what was the next thing we had on the list? So to break down break down my job into tasks and then to put myself as the third person observing me do those tasks. I did that and looked down and daily I went through the different tasks. I use words like knowledgeable, convincing, confident. So what are you going to do next with that? How are you going to use it to shape what you do? I think I can use it so that perhaps, whereas before I might have been a little negative about whether I could drive something forward in terms of school improvements or whatever, mm -hmm. any issue, I can perhaps do it with a little bit more confidence now. Mm -hmm. And not spend too much time and not too much energy, worrying about possible outcomes mm -hmm. when I know the evidence is. And that's a great term, evidence, because this is evidence to support you. Mm -hmm. And very often what you've just said is so true, we waste loads of time and energy, mm -hmm. which we could keep for the times we really need it, as opposed to the times when we're actually giving it out and we don't need to. Okay, and then? The next task I had was the delegation. Yes. And I'll hold my hand up. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to say I want you to do something like that. And I did try, and I'll give you an example of how I tried. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm in school responsible for examinations, so I ended up me actually setting the timetable, but a colleague being given the responsibility to do the invigilation and sorting mm -hmm. out all the invigilation mm -hmm. for it, which was a step forward. Absolutely. So that's, so that's good. And delegation doesn't have to be, Brendan, an all or nothing scenario. You've now broken that task down, kept the bit that is crucial you do, and got rid and delegated to somebody else what they are very able to do and you don't need to do. The other thing as well that might, that might fall into this category is that as a leadership team we're, we're actually looking at our roles and responsibilities and also empowering other staff. That is fantastic again, because it sounds like the senior team are being very responsible by ensuring that what gets done gets done well. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's nice to say, oh yeah, I'm responsible for these things, but actually that can, act, that can be quite a negative thing if they're not being done, mm -hmm. or if they're not being done well. Mm -hmm. So to, to share the load is actually quite positive. Fantastic. And have you had some time to think about your journal? Yeah, I try to work into my daily timetable, which, if I was honest, a lot of it was all to do with schooly tasks. And I've tried to put in some of my, some of what I would now call the me time tasks. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. Not, not as good as it should be, I don't think. I think if it, my wife would say that I'm still not as good as I could be in that area and not giving myself enough time to relax. Mm -hmm. But 
I think she would agree that there's been a marked improvement. May I make a suggestion? Because I think you've done really, really well, Brendan, I do. You've put the commitment in, you're getting the payback for it, mm -hmm. you know that if you just keep on doing what you're doing, it's going to get better. So what I suggest is that you get your diary out and you put a review note in your diary for something like 12 weeks from now. Mm -hmm. Okay? And in 12 weeks, when you get there, go back and have a proper review over everything on that list. And it's a really good way of keeping ourselves on task, of recognising how much we've done, so that's back mm. to the appreciation yeah. side. And then we can also have a tinker. So if you have a look and think, well, there's still a little bit here that maybe I could kind of, you know, get a bit more time for me or maybe delegate yeah. a bit more or whatever, you've got an opportunity to think mm. about it. Oh, well, thank you, Brendan. Thank you very much. It's been fantastic. <laughs> really interesting. Brendan's done a great job. He's made a fantastic start and he's really getting the benefits for himself. But he also recognises that change takes time. So he's begun the process, but now I think he's got the motivation to see it to the end. I would definitely recommend that every member of the teaching profession attempts at least to do what I've tried to do and look at their work-life balance. Because Glidine has suggested that those dedicated teachers, and there are many hundreds and thousands of them, who work every day and slog their guts out for the children and for the schools that they're working in, they are the ones who, if they don't do what I've tried to do, will end up feeling really stressed. And I've seen the benefit, personally, of actually looking and taking time out and knowing that, actually, in the end, you become more productive, not less productive.